The ability to trade speed for power is a fundamental principle of engineering, and the simple gear is how it's done. In the next few minutes, you're going to learn not just how these work, but how to do the simple math that tells you exactly how much your speed you gain or how much power you can multiply. This is a fundamental skill that helps you design your own projects or just better understand the mechanics of the world around you. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've spent over 10 years as a robotics and design educator breaking down these exact concepts. First, I'm going to show you the basics of how gears mesh together. Then we'll walk through the simple calculation for gear ratios. And finally, I'll show you how that directly translates to changes in speed and torque with a few practical examples. So I've got a few little gears set up here. I have a 30 tooth, a 20 tooth, and a 10 tooth gear. There are multiple ways that you can measure gears. You can measure them by their circumference, by their diameter. But one of the most common ways of measuring a gear is simply counting the number of teeth. And I've 3D printed up a couple of gears here to make your life really, really simple. So 30, 20, and 10, that makes our calculations nice and easy. And I've got a little box here that we can be running these things on top of. So when you're calculating a gear ratio, I like to calculate using teeth. It makes life a lot easier. But again, it's not really important which one you use, but we'll be using teeth for the rest of this. So we'll go ahead and put this 30 tooth aside for now. And we're going to focus on the 20 tooth and the 10 tooth gear. For all gears, you have your input gear and you have your output gear. Sometimes these are called a driver and a driven gear, but input and output is a lot simpler for us to uh, use in this calculation. So I'm gonna grab my 10 tooth and I'm gonna grab my 20 tooth gear here. Now up on these gears, I have taken one of the teeth and I have painted that tooth. So I have one painted tooth here and one painted tooth here. So it makes it easy for us to be able to calculate this around. So let's assume that in this point, the blue is our input and the red is our output gear. So let's go ahead and let's count for each time that I rotate this blue gear, we'll see how many rotations this red gear makes. So let's go ahead and see how many times it takes for this black line to get back up to the top. So as I rotate this around, that's one rotation of the red gear. And let's keep rotating. And that is one full rotation of the blue gear and two rotations for the red gear. So in this current setup, we have a one to two gear ratio. For every one turn of the input gear, you get two turns of the output gear. Now for calculating this further, if we were to look at the number of teeth that we had, you'll probably see something really quick. We have 10 teeth to 20 teeth. So if your input gear, you can count up the number of teeth you have. The output gear, count up the number of teeth you have. And then just simplify your ratios. In this case, take out our zero, and we get left with a one to two ratio. If you go from smaller to larger in number, this is called overdrive. And in an overdriven system, you're going to increase your speed, but decrease your torque. And torque is a measurement of rotational force. And of course, speed is just velocity, how quick you are moving through something. So let's take a look at that a little deeper so we can understand how that speed and torque works. There's another simple way we can calculate this out. For our gear ratio, the actual equation we can use is the number of teeth out divided by teeth in. And in this case, the number of teeth out divided by teeth in is, oops, 10 teeth out divided by 20 teeth. And of course, 10 divided by 20 is 0 0.5. So this is a 0 0.5 output in force, or half of the force, but double the speed. So now that we know that our gear ratio is 0 0.5, in order to find the torque output, we can just simply multiply that in. So if let's assume that our input gear is this 20 tooth and we're driving it with a 15 Newton meter motor input, if we multiply that by 0 0.5, we get a 7.5 Newton meter output. However, in order to find the output RPM, Instead of multiplying, we divide it. So let's assume that our input RPM is 100 RPM input. 
we divide that by 0 0.5 and we get a 200 RPM output. Now these equations assume that you have absolute perfect efficiency. Uh, efficiency basically keeps track of how much power is lost throughout this system. And you can have backlash in your gears. The more gears you add, the less efficiency you're going to have, the uh, sloppier your gears mesh. And of course, you're never going to have perfect efficiency. So you will have a little bit of reduction in this depending on what your system is made out of and how, how tight your tolerances are. So what happens if we take our gear ratio and we flip it around? So now we're going to input a 10 tooth gear and we're going to output a 20 tooth gear. With both of them at the top, this time let's rotate the red gear and let's count how many times the blue gear rotates around. We should know that it's still going to be one rotation. And as I complete another full rotation on red here, we get one full rotation on blue. So in this case, for every two rotations of our input gear, we get one output rotation of our output gear or a two to one ratio. So again, if we were going to calculate that out for our gear ratio, we can simply take our teeth output, divide it by our teeth input, and we end up with a two to one gear ratio. Now, unlike overdrive, we're now running in a gear reduction. So we're now reducing our speed or our RPM goes down in a gear reduction, but our torque goes up. So it's the exact inverse of the equation. Overdrive or RPM went up, but torque went down. In a gear reduction, our RPM goes down, but our torque goes up. So again, using the same example, let's assume that we have an input torque of 15 Newton meters. If we multiply that by our gear ratio, we end up with an output torque of 30 Newton meters. But if we had that input RPM, of 100, we divide that by our gear ratio and we have an output RPM of 50 RPM. Now let's run another example here of what happens if we were to use a 30 tooth gear. So you can probably guess just going off our calculations where things are going to go, but I always like using practical examples just to test our thinking. I'm going to mesh this gear around just so it ends up perfectly up top. So now I have two black lines here written on both my yellow and red respectively. So let's go ahead and make red our input and yellow is our output. So as we rotate this around, this is one rotated red, two rotations of the red, and three rotations of the red brings our yellow point back up to the top. So in this scenario, we have a three to one gear ratio. This is a gear reduction system. So we're going to have three times the torque, but we're going to have three times less RPM. If we take it and flip it around, we just simply go ahead and reverse those. We now have a one to three ratio in an overdrive system, and we're going to have three times the RPM, but three times less the torque. Now for calculating gear ratios, not only can we use the teeth out divided by the teeth in to find our gear ratio? We can also use our RPM in divided by our RPM out. Or if we know it, we can use our torque out divided by our torque in. So those are three more calculations that you can use to be able to find your gear ratios. If you want to find the power or the wattage of your system, you can use two multiplied by pi times your RPM times your torque divided by 60 will give you whatever your wattage system is. Now, if you know what your efficiency calculation is, Let's just say that your efficiency is 85% or 0 0.85. What we can do is we can simply take our gear ratio and multiply it by our efficiency. 
So in our case of before, where we had a G ratio, let's go ahead and use this one, where we had R2 to 1 gear ratio or a 0 0.5 gear ratio. For every two input rotations, we get one output rotation. And we had a 15 nanometer torque input. What we can do is we can simply take that 15, multiply it by 0 0.5, and multiply it again by our 0 0.85 for efficiency. And if we plug all that into our calculator, a output of 6.375 newton meters instead. So it's pretty easy if you know what your actual efficiency points are. In order to calculate your efficiency, that's a whole nother video, and we'll get more into that in the future. Now, one last question that might be on your mind is, what happens if I have multiple gears in a row? Is the gear ratio going to change from this blue gear to this yellow gear? So let's go ahead and let's calculate this out. So let's go ahead and rotate this 20 tooth gear and see how many times the yellow tooth gear rotates it around. So this is one full rotation of blue and about another half rotation of blue. So one and a half rotations on blue ends up making a rotation of the yellow, which if we were to put our gear ratio in there, that would make sense. So the final gear ratio was 1.5 five to one. And in this case, we went from a 20 tooth through a 10 tooth through a 30 tooth gear. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. In order to calculate this, we can actually just take two simple gear ratios. And we know in this case, this one is a one to two gear ratio. And then this gear ratio was a one to three, or sorry, a three to one gear ratio. Three to one, sorry, three to one gear ratio. So if we multiply those two together, we end up with a three to two gear ratio or a 1.5 to one gear ratio. So adding in idler gears is what this one is called as it spins idly as the other gears rotate around does not change the output system. So calculating your gear ratios on a gear train system with multiple idler gears, all you need to know is your first gear and your last gear in order for you to be able to sort that out. Now, one last thing to keep in mind is that the more idler gears you have, the more inefficiencies you're adding to your system. So you will not get perfect power transfer between these because you get something that's called backlash. So you can see that as I rotate this blue gear a little bit, the red gear multiplies a bit, and that is our concept of backlash. So before that yellow gear starts to spin, I can actually rotate that blue and red gear a little bit. So that's where our backlash comes in and where we don't get that perfect power transfer. So I hope you found that helpful in being able to define yours. These are the equations you're going to need at the end of the day. Again, for gear ratio, teeth in divided by, sorry, teeth out divided by teeth in or RPM in divided by RPM out, or torque out divided by torque in. If you want to find out your power, your wattage, you can take 2 pi, multiply it by the RPM, multiply it by your torque, divide that by 60. And again, this would be for your output, is what this equation would apply to. So I hope you found that useful, talking in, in a really quick explanation about how overdrive works and how gear reductions work. And I hope that that helps you calculate gear ratios a little bit more efficiently.